Today we're going to talk about how to correct a short circuit on a typical line-out starter set. We have here for us a 6-31960 Polar Express set. Once we've set up the track, we have the train on the track, we go ahead and apply power. We power up, we notice that the green light on the CW80 transformer or the PowerMax 40 watt transformer is blinking on and off. This is telling us that the transformer is detecting a short. The short comes from several different uh, possibilities. But we're going to go ahead and turn the transformer off. The green light will go on solid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to inspect the wheels on the track. As you can clearly see, the car is derailed. So we're going to go ahead and correct the short by placing the car on the track. Turn the transformer on and the train runs properly. If after replacing the wheel on the track you find that the transformer is still blinking and the short still exists, what we recommend doing is removing everything from the track and starting with one item. So to do this we'll go ahead and demonstrate. Remove all of the items from the track and apply power. If the light stays solid it means there's no short circuit. Then what we're going to do is place one item on the track at a time. So we'll start with this car. We put it on the track, power up, seems to work. There's still a short, our transformer is blinking because it's not on the track. Make sure that the car is properly placed on the track and that it rolls freely. Transformer light is on solid, interior illumination is lit, there's no short circuit in that car. Turn the power off, place another car on the track. Power it up. Light comes on in this car, comes on in this car. The green light is on solid, no short circuit. Place the tender on the track. Power it up. Lights are on in both cars. Green light is solid. Tender's not shorting out. We can confirm the air whistle works. Whistle works. Power off. Place the locomotive on the track. Turn on the power. Train runs. Everything's on the track properly. Green light on the transformer is solid. There's no short circuit. When you're troubleshooting your train set, it's best to remove as many layers of complexity as possible. This is why we take all of the cars off the track and place them on one at a time. It is possible for you to have a short circuit in just one car. For instance, down here underneath the car you've got a roller that rides on the center rail and the outside rail wheels that ride on the outside rails. There's a wire connected to this terminal or this roller and a wire connected to these wheels. That is what provides the AC hot and the AC ground to power the light inside the car. If the wire from this collector is broken off of the roller itself and shorting against the strap that connects the two axles together, you'll have a direct short. Hence the reason we take all the cars off and place them on the track one at a time. If it turns out that you've got a broken wire, it's a very simple fix which we'll cover in a separate video. We want to point out that Lionel train sets that are equipped with an air whistle only have a whistle sound. On the transformer, this whistle sound can be activated by turning on the track power and pressing the whistle button. You can press the bell button all day long and nothing will happen. Train sets equipped with an air whistle only have a whistle. They do not include a bell sound. We include the whistle and bell button on the CW80 and on the PowerMax 40 watt transformer because it is the industry standard to provide both a whistle and bell button on transformers. Now, if you press the bell button and you get the air whistle, it's because you have the center rail connected to the black terminal and the outside rails connected to the red terminals. It's very easy to change. Simply swap the connectors on the back of the transformer, ensuring that the center rail is connected to the red terminal and the outside rails are connected to the black terminal. It's also important to note that your air whistle is, include, is, in, is actually inside your tender. When the tender is off the track, 
and only the locomotive is on the track, your whistle will not work because the whistle is not inside the locomotive. It is inside the tender. If you place your locomotive on the track and turn on the power and the locomotive does not run, you press the direction button and it still doesn't run and it appears as though the locomotive is broken. That's simply not the case. All of our entry level starter set locomotives are equipped with a reverse unit on off switch located on the 080 locomotives under the cab and it's clearly labeled reverse off and on and smoke off and on. If the reverse switch is in the off position, you need to place it in the on position. When the reverse switch is on, that will allow the locomotive to cycle through all three directional states. When it's in the off position, it will lock it into a directional state. Again, on the 080s, those switches are located underneath the cab of the locomotive on the frame. On a Polar Express style locomotive or a Berkshire Junior, those switches are located inside the cab. Down on the floor at the back head of the locomotive, there's a smoke on off switch and a direction on off switch. On our 442 locomotives, the switches are located on the underside of the frame. The rearmost switch is the direction lockout. When it's facing, when the switch is in the position closest to the front of the locomotive, that is on. And when it is in the position towards the tender of the locomotive, it's in the off position. The forwardmost switch is for the smoke unit on and off. Towards the front of the engine is on, towards the back of the locomotive is off. On our 440 general style locomotives, these switches are clearly marked on the back of the cab. On the general, you have lock and run. Lock is the same as off and run is the same as on. You also have no smoke and smoke. For our 060 dockside locomotives, the switches are clearly marked on the underside of the frame. Smoke on and off, reverse on and off. There's also an on off switch for the whistle because on the dock cider, the whistle is included in the locomotive. So before you contact customer service, make sure that you have checked the reverse switch to ensure it is in the on position. You check to make sure that the transformer light stays on solid when it's plugged in and trains are on the track. If you continue to have problems, we encourage you to contact customer service at the number shown on the bottom of the screen. On some locomotives, such as this 080 switcher tender from a ready to run set, we only have one and oftentimes have two collectors on the trucks. These collectors here that roll on the center rail are responsible for providing power to the air whistle inside. When the whistle button is pressed, it activates the air whistle. In the event your air whistle fails to work, the first place to check is your collector wire. This can be done by removing the collector and looking to ensure that the wires are uh, securely soldered to the ground strap, which contacts the axles, and the collector roller tab, which is responsible for getting the power to the air whistle. If one of these wires is broken, it simply needs to be soldered back in place. Any local dealer or authorized service station should be able to handle this task for you if you're unable to do it on your own. I'd like to show you an example of how it works when it is properly connected. Simply put this back in place. Place it back on the track. Apply power, whistle works. Now I'm going to intentionally disconnect that wire so that you can see what occurs. The wire is now loose from the center rail collector tab. And the whistle no longer works. Air whistle tenders are not equipped with an on-off switch. 
So if your air whistle fails to operate, it is most likely because the wire from that center rail collector to the circuit board inside the tender is broken. We encourage you to check that prior to contacting customer service. This way, when you do contact us, you'll have all the information available that we need to help you solve your problem. We'd like to take just a moment and talk about the smoke units on entry level starter set locomotives. It's very important that you keep smoke fluid in the smoke stack. All of the steam locomotives, the smoke fluid is put into the stack. Only four to six drops at a time is required. The smoke unit is designed to smoke as voltage increases on the track. So if you run the train slow, it is most likely that you will not generate or see much smoke. The more voltage that you apply to the track, as you increase the throttle, the more smoke will be generated and come out of the locomotive. All Line L starter set locomotives are designed so they do not fly off the track when the transformer is at full voltage. In this range from more than halfway to stop, your, your starter set locomotive should generate smoke. That is providing that the smoke is turned on on the switch and that you have smoke fluid in the stack and that you are operating above half throttle. Anywhere below half throttle, it's most likely that your locomotive will not generate smoke. 